everyone. Today we'll look into writing our first recursive function in C++. Recursion is a method of solving a problem where the solution depends on solutions to smaller instances of the same problem. In computer science, it's a function or algorithm that calls itself. Today, we'll be writing a program that prints out the numbers of the Fibonacci sequence. This program will need to implement a recursive function to get the job done. So first, we'll start by building our basic C++ file. We'll make sure to include our IO stream directive and that we're using the standard namespace. And then we'll write int main return zero. So first we're going to want our user to enter a total number of terms and when I say terms, I mean we'll be asking the user for a single number which our program will output the correct corresponding Fibonacci numbers for. So in order to start writing this program, it might help to understand more what the Fibonacci sequence is. And the Fibonacci sequence is a set of numbers that starts with a 1 or 0 and this is followed by a one and then proceeds based on the rule that each number, each Fibonacci number, is equal to the sum of the preceding two numbers. So to start, we're going to want to take in four or five different um, integer variables. So we'll declare int a, b, sum and n and then we'll declare int i we'll set a equal to 0 and we'll set b equal to 1 now we'll output to the user enter total number of terms We'll take in n as our number, and we'll call our, fun our function Fibonacci against a, b, and n minus 2. Then we'll output a blank line. So now we'll need to set up our first recursive function, Fibonacci. To do this, we write void Fibonacci and then it will take in formal parameters of a, b, and n. We'll declare an int of sum in here and we'll create a condition where if n is more than zero, we'll set sum to the sum of a plus b We'll output to the user a space between sums and a blank line, or ending the line. We'll set a equal to b, we'll set b equal to sum, and now is where this function becomes a recursive function because after performing the base of our Fibonacci math, we're going to again call the Fibonacci function on our formal parameters. But this time we'll set n to minus 1. Now we'll compile our code. And we'll go to run it by typing Fibonacci. It asks us to enter the total number of terms. Let's say, or how about we say 13 for now. 
And there are the valid Fibonacci numbers for the first 13 uh, numbers within the Fibonacci sequence. But what if we wanted to enter a higher number of terms? Let's say uh, 47, or how about 48? Here we see that the function works itself out for the first 47 of our terms, but this last term gives us back a value of negative 1, 10 billion, and whatever this number works out to, it isn't representative of the valid Fibonacci number for the 48th term. And the reason this program is failing us once it gets to this large number is because we're using ints instead of doubles. Something we can do within uh, Sublime Text is select int and then press Control D to individually select each int in the original file and then we can backspace with all of these int selected actually we're going to want to select just these ints so by pressing control you can select the right ints and leave make sure you leave the int main unselected and now this might not be a, a trick that makes you code any faster. I just think it's good to know that when in Sublime Text, you can press Control D to select the next instance of a particular word. Um, it's kind of like a, a really quick way to find and replace something. Uh, we'll erase this and we'll change this int to a double. Give that a save compile our Fibonacci code, run Fibonacci, and we'll enter 48. And now, instead of being given an inaccurate number for our 47th Fibonacci number term, we're given an accurate answer in scientific E notation using the double data type. And this works out to be 2,971,215,073. This code has shown you the basics of using recursion in your C++ code. And what's awesome about using recurs recursive functions is they can be introduced uh, in very simple and very complex ways, but similar yet more complex versions of this very same recursive Fibonacci code that we just wrote can be used in so many situations. Uh, the Fibonacci sequence in programs has been known to predict the behavior or growth and decay of organic subjects, as well as the behavior of the economy or financial assets. It's uh, even used in creating mathematic visualizations as seen in this Mandelbrot Fractal Explorer. Using recursion in your code is a useful way to create robust functionality and it adds a critical tool to your growing toolkit as a programmer. Thanks for watching.